Welcome. All right, here we go. What we have is negative r plus 5 times square root of 5 times r cubed divided by square root of 3r to the fourth plus 4 times square root of 5 times r cubed. Whew. Okay, um, so we got to simplify this, all right? And when simplifying, there's a couple rules with uh, um, radical expressions that we need to understand. First of all, we don't want to simp we don't want to divide by a radical that's not a, uh, a perfect square. Meaning, I can I can divide by the square root of four because really the square root of four is two, so that's an integer we can evenly divide into it. But if I was going to take the square root of let's say three, well that's an irrational number that goes on and on forever. So we're never going to get a um, a simplified a easy number when we divide by square root of three or an irrational number. So what we want to do to simplify this is to get our square roots off of the bottom. Now here I have two square roots, and I also have them added to each other, um, and they're not like terms, so I can't combine them. Um, so the next thing we want to do is we look at this and we have a binomial. Well, when we have a square root, we need to get it off the bottom. Since I can't combine these and I have them in a binomial, what I'm going to want to do is multiply them by the conjugate. So the conjugate of my denominator is going to be the exact same expression, but rather than adding the two terms, I am now going to subtract them. And you'll see why we do this in a second. And then remember, whatever I do on the denominator, I have to make sure I do on the numerator to make sure that I have uh, equivalent fractions. Okay, so why do we multiply by the conjugate? Well, what you'll notice is when we multiply the conjugate, these are the exact two binomials, except one's positive and one's negative, which actually produce us the difference of two squares. Um, if you remember, difference of two squares says a squared minus b squared equals a minus b times a plus b. So what happens is really all I need to do is multiply my first two terms and multiply my last two terms, and that will give me the product of my denominator. Now for the numerator, it's a little bit more difficult. I'm going to have to apply multiply the rules of multiply two binomials, which there's multiple different ways. Um, for this video, I'm just going to go through the FOIL method, which means multiply my first two terms. Uh, the first terms. So negative r times the square root of 3r to the fourth is just going to produce me a negative r times square root of 3r to the fourth. Then I multiply the outer terms, and a negative 4 times negative r is going to produce me with a positive 4r. And now when I multiply a, a radical by a radical, I can multiply the two radicands. So 5 times 5, I'm sorry, negative, that just becomes a positive 4r, right, since square root of 5r cubed. Sorry, negative r times that is just going to produce you positive r, 4r times 5r cubed. Now on my inner two terms, now I can multiply my radicands. So I'm going to have a positive 5. Then 5 times 3 is going to produce me 15. And then r cubed times r to the fourth, remember by rules of exponents, when you, multiply, when you multiply numbers with the same base and they have exponents, you add the exponents. So that's going to give me r to the seventh. Then I multiply the last two terms, which will produce me a negative 20 uh, times the square root of 25 r to the sixth. Okay, so that was all the top. It's a lot. Now, let's go in the bottom, which is going to be easier because I can apply the rules of difference of two squares. So here, I can multiply my two radicands. So I have the square root of 3 times 3, which is 9, r to the eighth, minus 16 times the square root of 25, r to the sixth. Okay? So now we got this big mumbo jumbo, as I like to say. Um, so now what we need to do is remember, well, how can we simplify this? Well, remember, if I want to simplify the square root of 8, I could break that down into 4 times 2. The square root of 4 is 2 times 2. So if I want to break up the square root of r to the 6th, we can break that up into the same thing. You want to break it up into numbers you can take the square root of. Well, remember, we add exponents, right? So therefore, I can break it up into r squared times r squared times r squared, leaving me with the square root of r squared is r times r times r, which leaves me the square root of r to the sixth would be r to the third power. 
Now, real quick, if I change this to r to the seventh, there would be an extra r there. And it looks something like that. All right? So let's use though that method to help us simplify the rest of this. So here, I can take the square root of r squared, which would be um, square root, I'm sorry, take the square root of r to the fourth, which would produce me with r squared, and then r squared times negative r give me a negative r cubed times the square root of three, plus the square root of r cubed would give me r times r be a positive four r squared, and then I still have a square root of five r, plus here I'm gonna have five, uh, r to the seventh can be broken down, as we already said, as r cubed times the square root of 15r minus the square root of 25, I can simplify that to five, r cubed, we, our r to the sixth, we can simplify as r cubed, so therefore I can have five times negative 20, which would be a negative 100 r cubed. And we take that all over the square root of nine, which is three, r to the eighth would give me r to the fourth, or the square root of r to the eighth would give me r to the fourth, minus the square root of 25 is five. Five times negative 16 is a negative 80. The square root of r to the sixth, we can rewrite as r cubed, okay? Now, everything's looking pretty good here, all right? We're looking at this and we say, oh, okay, everything looks great. But there's one last thing we can do to simplify this. What we can do is you can say, these are all at a multiple of r squared. Meaning I can all, r squared, um, they all have a redundance of r squared. So what I can do is I can now simplify, I can take out an r squared out of each term and see what I'll be left with. So when I divide everything by an r squared, or divide out an r squared, what I'm left with is a negative r times the square root of three plus four square root of five r plus five r square root of 15r minus 100r, all divided by 3r squared minus 80r. And <clears throat> wow, ladies and gentlemen, we did it. So that's pretty much going to be your simplified version of simplifying this very long radical expression. All right, thanks.